Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome back to more Chrono Trigger. Last time, we lived every kid's dream by going 65 million years in the past. It sounds exaggerated, but it's just what we did. No big deal. And visited the Mystic Mountains in the age of the dinosaurs, getting a lot stronger and seeing that, wow, we have slipped a lot as a society in the way of making weapons and armor if the stuff they had back then was as good as it was. Then again, I guess back then they might have just been wearing slabs of rock as clothing, which would be more effective. Oh, never mind. Anyway, this time, back in the end of time once again, we've been sitting on the advice for quite some time to go back to our own time and see what we can find there. Which we're going to procrastinate even further by going to the Protodome in 2300 AD. Trust me, very worth your time. For some odd reason, I've never known why this is. By leaving the room and coming back after being here once and inching forward ever so slightly, tapping A as you go. Come on. There it is! Strength capsule that is completely invisible. It doesn't twinkle as soon as you walk into the room for a split second like all the others do. It's just invisible. And I don't know why. I could see no harm at all if you've ever missed that in a playthrough. It's really stupid that you can't see it, and I don't know why they... Maybe it has the same coordinates as the time hole, and you could just barely clip it outside of it. Chrono has been getting a lot of strength capsules lately. I think it's Robo's turn. We finally have another party member worth giving these to, so shall be it. That's all we had to do. Told you it was worth your five seconds. Next, it's time. Medina Village, 1080. You folks came out of my wardrobe, didn't you? What are you doing in here? Who do you think you are, coming and going from someone else's wardrobe at all hours of the night and day? Humans, I tell ya. Wait a minute. Medina Village is a village of fiends, founded by our ancestor when they lost the war against humankind 400 years ago. Most of the townsfolk still have a grudge against humans, so be careful. There's an odd, there is an odd human who lives near a cave in the mountains to the west. He may be able to help you out. Thank you for your advice. But why are you being so kind? Do your people not despise humans? Robo, I hate to tell you, but uh, you're not. Uh, never mind. he's a good boy. It's been 400 years since man warred against Fiend. There's no use living in the past. Of course, not many other Fiends seem to agree with that. And now they're gonna have an argument. Herb, I told you you should have cleaned out the closet. You got an alternate dimension in there. Uh, I wish I could be around for it. The market. They do have a grudge against humans. I got nothing to sell to humans. Get out of here. Please let me give you my money. I'm used to saying that from liking Nintendo. Humans think they got a right to everything. Teach them a lesson, boss. The manager works part-time in Guardia Castle. Joke's on you, I saw you in the prison towers. You'll do anything for money. This jailer, not Gowler, is the same enemy that we saw back in the prison towers. It's pretty rare and there's not many opportunities to fight it. Thanks for telling me that it's pronounced Jailer. I pronounced it Gowler not just because of the spelling, but because there's a character in Kid Icarus Uprising that is named Gowl and it's spelled that way and I just assumed it was a mythological reference. Uh, learn the Fire Punch Dual Tech. Fire Sword Dual Tech, good. Now that Luke has magic, having her in the party, we just get stuff. They, they beat you, boss? Monsters! No, buddy, that's you guys. All right, I'll sell. In Medina Village, you will have to deal with such discrimination as price gouging! The worst of all prejudices. 460 for a potion, 4600 for a mid potion, 32,000 for a high potion! We have not seen these yet, they restore 500 HP. Not worth obtaining, trust me. Uh, Panacea, 460. Athenian Water, Shelter, 36,800 for a regular ether. But that's not the worst of his prejudice. Oh no. He has equipment. 16,100 for a bronze blade. Steel Saber doesn't matter, these are early game weapons. However, 
He has one of the strongest swords ever available for Chrono in the Zanmato at 65,000 gold. Does one and a half times damage to magical beings as well. You can kind of see with fiends being magical beings why he wouldn't be so fast to just hand that over to us considering what we just did to his boss, I'm just saying. But if you want to do this, there is somewhat of a fun in being overpowered and in grinding up to be said overpowered and then just rushing through the rest of the adventure. Maybe you want to vary up your playthrough of Chrono Trigger. The best way to get money is to get good at Johnny's races and sell the items that he gives you. If you can get the 10 mid-ethers every time from that trick I showed you from getting the uh, 777 every time, that's about 10,000 gold every time you do it. And you'd only have to really do it, you know, five or six times if you have comparable money to what I have. I like to think of this as Chrono Trigger's T-Rex Bat Challenge. There's the Radiant Helm, which is the best helmet that we've seen so far, also 65,000. And then we have the Loomis Robe and Radiant Plate, which even put the Titanium Vest to shame. You can get good equipment here, but it's just a matter of, is it worth all that grinding to you? Ha! You think I'm gonna charge a human the going rate? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. I explained your reasoning and I understand it. Medina Inn. No room here for humans. Scat. Out! You're spoiling my drink! Filthy humans ought to go take a hike through that crack cave and get what's coming to them. <laughs> yeah, well, um, joke's on you. Uh, you're so uneducated in this stupid village that you didn't even use proper capitalization on a proper noun. Yeah, I sure told him. Grammar's really serious. Yeah, I told him. You still talking to me? Don't know what's good for you, do you? Get him out, boys. You get challenged to fights pretty much everywhere you look. These enemies are weak. We were fighting them back in the Manolia Cathedral just fine. They go down in one regular attack pretty much all, pretty much every single time. That guy's already gone. Even if he doesn't look it, you can't target him anymore after his HP is depleted. Go ahead and take up a golf club to his shin. That'd kill any man. And get 255 gold. Ah, help! After murdering all of his customers, now he'll give you a room because he ain't gonna be able to pay the bills anymore. 200 G for a night, even though they just gave me more money than that, nah, I won't even take a room that they bought me. It's not worth it when the end of time is one time portal away. And lastly is the Elder's House. Blast that Aussie the Eighth, always hiding behind his ancestral fame to boss us around. This work is brutal. Uh, let me, let me out, let me, uh, no, no, don't keep me, don't keep me from the item, don't keep me from the item! Speed Capsule! First time seeing one of these, it does what it says on the tin, raising speed by one, and considering that the maximum possible speed stat is 16, it's kind of attractive, the idea of giving that to Chrono and giving him even more. Though, uh, Luca or Robo? Maybe Luca. Luca and Robo are tied for having the lowest space speed out of everybody. Uh, who do I want to give it to? Uh, I'll give it to Luca. She definitely deserves that, not so much Chrono. Marl has the speed belt on, and since she's not in our party, that's just kind of being wasted on her. Robo can take that, causing his speed to now be equal to Luca's, and Luca, guess what? We're just spreading that headband all around. Everybody's getting a sweat in it, and now it's your turn. I'm so sorry that you had to be the one to go after Robo, considering that he sweats grease. That's not going to be a problem with you shooting fire around everywhere, will it? Okay, I hope not. You're the smart one. I'm sure you would have voiced some opinion if it wasn't. I'm Ozzy the Eighth, leader of this village. My great, 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 great grandfather fought against the humans at the side of the Fiend Lord himself. Oh, great Fiend Lord, why didn't you exterminate the human race four centuries ago when you had the chance? Ozzy the Eighth is a fraud. He's wearing body paint, and I can prove it. By going into the menu and looking at him as soon as I unpause, He's green for a split second. <laughs> this bug is in every version of Chrono Trigger and I don't know why. Maybe there wasn't a good color palette for him and they had to use some other trick to make him that color, but it's clear that his color scheme was more like these uh, little garlic juniors running around and not what he is. A fearsome beast lives in the cave on the mountain to the west. Only magic can harm it. I doubt a human would be able to make it through, not being able to use magic at all. Well, I better get back to tidying up before Oz of the Eighth catches me. Uh, and I better get to grabbing this item before you catch me a magic capsule! That should absolutely go on Marl or Luca as they have amazing magic stats. I'm thinking, uh, yeah, let's go for, uh, let's 
go for Lucas. She's got 24 compared to Robo and Chrono only having about 10. And that's all the buildings around Medina Village. Then there's the Medina Square that makes you feel like you're made of glass. What is the meaning of this eerie chanting? Oh, great fiend lord. 400 years have passed since Magus commanded the fiends and waged war against the humans. But if Lavos can be reawakened, there will be no more humans. It was the fiend lord Magus who gave life to the almighty Lavos to aid us. And once Lavos awakens from his long slumber, the human race is doomed. The almighty fiend lord delivered Lavos onto us long ago with his great magic. 400 years have passed, he's saying the same thing as before. This statue used to stand in the Manolia Cathedral, which we found out was a place for the fiends to worship the fiend lord. As that cathedral no longer exists in the present time, this is what ultimately became of it. We've now run into this thing twice, and we know what relation it has to what is at hand. That place gives me the creeps. I just want to get out of there. I've always thought it was very unsettling. It does a good job doing what it's supposed to. Now on to the fabled polygon in the middle of the forest. This is atmosphere I can get behind. Get a mid ether for coming up here, and that looks awfully suspicious and important, wouldn't you say? Doesn't have any apparent use, but it's certainly something worth remembering. And that's all of Medina Village. Next. I'm thinking I'd like for you to listen to the music going on right here. Many people consider this their favorite Chrono Trigger song, and I felt bad not showcasing it back in the first episode, but there was so much to go over, so much to talk about, that there just wasn't a lot of time. Believe me, I love it too, and I wanted you to hear it. Oh, you've come to see me! Well, by all means, have a look at my collection! Could I interest you in a weapon? I'll give you a special price! Making up for the follies of the fiends. Thank you, buddy. You're just making us break even today by giving us discounted prices. He sells your box standard materials, though no high potions or um, ethers. Not quite as good of a stock, but it is fair prices. No sense buying from uh, the fiends unless you want to challenge yourself. The Crimson Blade for Chrono is new. Gives him a higher magic stat as well, which since we heard the Hecran Cave to the west has uh, lots of enemies only damaged by magic, that'll be doubly good. Bandit's bow we already have on a Luka. Uh, Luka, but no. Plasma gun we already have on Luka. Marl already has the bandit's bow, and Robo already has the hammer arm. No helmets, though we can now buy titanium vests. Marl's equip. What does Marl have? Does she have a titanium vest? Weapons are not meant for taking lives, they're meant for saving them. Marl, you have Mesozoic Mail, that's right. You can just go to a weaker piece of equipment because you're out of the party for right now, and that can go on Luca. Good effects we got going on here. Still sorry about the headband, though. We're all primed and ready to go. Oh, if you're wanting to return to Truce, there's a shortcut through the cave in the mountains to the north. Oh. Looks like we don't have any choice. Good thing we learned to use magic right when we did, otherwise we'd be in real trouble. Hecran Cave. Death to the enemies of Fiendkind! Did those two imps back in the village actually mean to help us by warning us of this cave? Or was it just reverse psychology knowing that we're adventurers and we're gonna wander into the first place in town that we hear is dangerous? I think not. They seem like good people. Not everyone's out to get you. Uh, those enemies are some of my favorites. They are merely called a hench in the Super Nintendo translation. I've always found that to be really funny. Not henchmen, just a hench. 
And ah, such a peaceful dungeon that we have ahead of us. The running water, the mist resting upon your cheeks. Ah, uh, a man could sleep in a place like this. If it wasn't for being infested with horrific demons. This is living pot that shoots out enemies right at you. These are the gin bottle. Hee hee hee, alcoholic reference, hee hee hee. And the other ones are cave stalkers. The cave stalkers are able to shoot ink at you, inflicting blindness. As you would guess, that makes your regular physical attacks miss constantly. It's a pain. Thankfully, Tex ain't so affected. As we heard, enemies have near-perfect physical defense almost entirely in the Hecran Cave. Very few enemies here, or maybe not even any enemies at all that don't have very high, uh, that don't have high magical resistance but have near-perfect physical defense. Robo's a great pick because he's just able to spread lots of damage around with his lasers. It's part of the reason why I wanted to bring him. I swapped in Luca just because she's behind on the techs as well, and she also does good magical damage. Her flamethrower can also spread damage around in a group, so really, everyone here is great. It Except for Chrono, that is. These are very cool looking Heracross type things, kind of like if Heracross and Glycopod had a baby. Rhino Weevils. Demonstrating the near perfect physical defense. Yeah, even Chrono was only able to do six damage. We ain't piercing that high at any time soon. This, however, will pierce said high. If you don't fry them with lasers, we'll just fry them in a literal sense. Nope, we're good. Pooh. Pretty easy battles if you come equipped. I would like to remind you that if you aren't equipped for this, there is a party swap menu on the bottom screen now at any time. You don't have to be at a save point, don't have to be in the overworld, none of that crap. Not an in, not even having to travel all the way back to the end of time. Nope, you can just swap party members out any time if you so wish. mid -ether. And more fights. Okay, well we already fought these guys before. One thing that I wanna go over that I think it'd be very, very worth it is we've already talked about how magic works, how there's different elements, everything's made up of it, um, how it's a one target thing unless we're talking about Robo. But now I'd like to go over how each of these characters is as a magic user. Starting with Chrono, he's not very good. He has lots of MP, but that's more so meant for his physical techs because those are gonna do a lot more damage. His magic stat is the lowest of any party member, in fact. He is not very strong. He's really only worth spending a turn using magic in situations like this where the enemies have near perfect physical defense or if the enemy is outright weak to light. Otherwise, he's honestly kind of a dud in that respect. Because it's his only weakness, I don't see it as worth using magic capsules because he's just so far behind the rest of the curve. His magic stat is generally about half what Lucas is at any given time. And when he's that weak in the way of magic and he's just so good at everything else, I don't see it as worth working on unless you have really nothing else to use them on. These here are Boundillos. Gonna pronounce these guys right, unlike their uh, ancestors. I'm so sorry, it is true. Your ancestors really were wrong by humankind. I call them my friend Dillos when they're actually fiend Dillos. They have high physical defense and they're worth fighting because they drop mid potions. Luca got a level up, good, good, perfect. So if Chrono's such a bad magic user, we can only go up from here. Wow, uh, okay. Cave bats. <laughs> Believe it or not. A freaking cave bat has perfect physical defense. A critical hit from Chrono there did 12. So I guess laser spin once again. That's what you're here for, Robo. You're uh, very round and very good at spinning as a result. So uh, good, good, good on you for that. I guess we'll get into Robo next, since he's kind of the talk of the town right now. Robo is honestly, okay, it's really weird. He's kind of similar to Chrono in that he has a low magic stat. His magic stat is second only to Chrono's in terms of how weak it is, and not even by that much. We heard from Specchio that Robo has laser weapons that manifest themselves as magic. Oh, magic scarf, wow. <laughs> We're just talking all about magic today. It really is the theme. The magic scarf raises magic by two. I don't think that's worth giving to much of, well, maybe Luca. Uh, yeah, Luca can take that. I think I'll sacrifice the one speed for it just for the time being. Well, no, I like speed too much. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so indecisive. Uh, but Robo has very low magic is what I'm trying to say here. He's mainly meant to nuke things with physical text. He doesn't even have that much MP. It's considerably lower than what Luca's is, for instance, and even Marl. Oh. He 
does kind of make up for it in being able to hit all enemies, which is what I've been using him for, and that's definitely a good trait. Remember, he is just emulating magic. He's not the real thing. It makes a lot of sense for the kind of character that he is that he would be this way. That being said, however, him being able to just do so many different things is nice, and him not truly being magical does have its advantages. Because he's not a magical being and merely emulates it, he doesn't have an elemental weakness. As a blanket statement, every single character has an innate magical resistance to their own element. For instance, Chrono resists light, but he's weak to dark, um, or shadow. Uh, Luca is resilient to fire, but she's weak to water. Robo not being a magical being means that he has no weakness or resistance. He just sort of walls everything, furthering his agenda of being a very tanky guy. He's very good for that. It's another reason why I like having him in the party when dealing with magical guys. Luca is very much the attacker of the group. She hits like a truck, she has a very high magic stat, and is just all around really dangerous because of that. She can't do much if the enemy isn't weak to fire because she just doesn't have that good of a physical attack and her element just is fire. She doesn't have a lot of variety there, but she's able to do a lot. Wow, she actually didn't kill them right there. This regular attack finishing him off would be hilarious, but it won't. <laughs> That's Luca for you. She's just kind of a one-trick pony, but she's very, very good at it. She has the highest magical stat of any party member, so she's really good at it. And then Marl, her magic is dependent on, or her healing is dependent on her magic, and so is her ice attack. I should mention that Specchio said that uh, everything in the world is made up of fire, water, light, and shadow. He didn't say ice, and that's because Marl's ice element just manifests, or uh, Marl's water element just manifests itself as ice. It's a different coat of paint, so that's what she uses. As you would guess, she is weak to fire and resilient to water, even though she uses ice to attack. It's not a separate element or anything special like that. It's just Marl has a quirk to her, which she's quirky. Makes sense that her magic would be as well. Manifests itself in certain ways, depending on the user of the magic. Another thing about Luca is that Flamethrower attacks all enemies in a line, so I could choose to attack uh, two enemies here for a decent amount of damage, or I could choose to attack one enemy very strongly for um, her regular magic. It's an example of how your weaker techs do not outright get outclassed by the things that you learn later, and they still have their own purposes. A mysterious force seals it shut. I think that might have been my worst attempt at that yet. Now, before we go on, been talking about Marl a little bit, but not been using her a lot of bit. I want to have her in the party, and if we could get into a fight right now, please right now, not later. I don't want to go up there. Ah, zoot. Did I actually kill all the enemies in here Like before I... I totally did. Okay, I want to get into one fight before moving onward. Oh man, I was gonna go back and slaughter the village, but they're all dead. It took me 1300 years to find an enemy that would battle me. I didn't time travel, I just waited that long. Whenever two characters have compatible texts with one another that can turn into dual texts, just uh, well, re really anytime that anybody learns a new single tech, get them into just one fight alongside each of your party members. At the end of a fight, they will learn dual text and, oh, trust me, you want the antipode bomb. Ironically, my mistake is a very good way to illustrate something about the Hecran cave that is unique. After beating the enemies, they permanently despawn. I was mistaken in thinking this would only happen after getting all the way through the area. This is special because it's a way to get from Medina Village across the water very easily. Now I'm going to save because it's actually a pretty fast way to get around the overworld. Going up the stairs. Death to the enemies of fiend kind. Heard that one plenty today, buddy. Sorry. Having contrary opinions does not make you unique because lots of people feel the way you do. This is Hecaran, the namesake of this cave and the face sake of the box art. He is only hurt by magic, as we have heard. He is a water elemental himself, so Luca has a slight innate weakness to him. And this is why I wanted to learn the Antipode Bomb. Oh boy, oh how cool does that look? 380 damage, beautiful. Not quite as strong as Robo's Ice Tackle, but so easy to learn. Only prerequisite being just that you have magic at all. 
because all it takes is one battle with Marl and Luca together, and yeah, they make him feel the girl power. Uh, Nerade Cyclone, probably mispronouncing that. I'm a little self-conscious now. I think ironically, I'm gonna make Chrono the healer of this fight. I just don't want to use up Marl's turn on healing. This is a great example of how great they are using magic. Just look at that nuke. Uh, mid potion, Luca. Good, good. I like you attacking somebody with their innate resistance and not the other way around. Chrono, just flexing your bicep while you throw her that. You are still getting to use your manly strength while being a healer. I like that you make it work. It shows that you really got a lot going on. Four damage out of them. <laughs> Probably should have equipped him with a different accessory than that, but I just don't like forgetting it, so it's fine. Besides, we're making very quick work of him, and it is a little bit of extra damage when he would just otherwise be the healer. Yeah! Does have a physical attack as well, but we're prepared for it. And now, go ahead, try and attack. See what it gets you. He's in a counterattack stance. St stance, stance. Yes, his counterattack smells terrible. Marl, you heal next. And use Cure. This is based on Marl's magic stat, healing 328 HP. Cure is great. I love the attack just so, attack. I, I love that tech just so much. Oftentimes, throughout the entire game, her magic stat is just so high that Cure fully heals everyone anyway. It doesn't really matter if you use anything more powerful than if you use an item. She will just fully heal everybody instantly by using Cure on them. Of course, though, it only works on one target, so it does kind of not have the best uses out of anything that you could use to heal. Party healing is a thing, and she is a little outclassed by that, but really for some in-between battles. Wouldn't hurt to switch Marl into the party. Use Cure three times, especially if she isn't in your active party, not using her MP toward anything else. That's it, 10 TP. 1500 G, and you're gone. If only Lord Magus had destroyed the human race 400 years ago when he first brought forth Lavos, the world would belong to us fiends now. So Magus created Lavos in the Middle Ages, and in the future, Lavos destroys the planet. If we go to the Middle Ages and stop Magus, can we change history? If we use the gate at the fairgrounds, sounds like a plan. I think uh, Hecran was really just like a child who lost a fight and was like, yeah, well, um, if they only genocided humanity, we wouldn't be here for me to lose. And doesn't think before he speaks, he's just petty. And there we are. It's a fast shortcut. Because we have a gate that takes us to Medina Village, that's a quick way to get around the overworld that's really not that much slower than using the gates if you want to get around. All the enemies disappear from the cave, and it's pretty convenient. Anyway, now that we made it back to Truce, next time on Chrono Trigger, us escaped convicts are going to try to keep a very low profile while saying hi to our families once again. See you guys then.